Hello everyone, this is Nathalie and today I am here to talk to you how to become an end-of-life doula. First, one does not become an end-of-life specialist, an end-of-life doula um, overnight. It is a journey. It is um, continued education um, as we learn from every article, every patient, every family we serve. Uh, first, you need to find uh, a good trainer. You need to find a reputable trainer and do your research in that regard. You're going to look for a trainer who, is, um, who has experience uh, in the field, uh, either as a nurse, um, in hospice, um, in as hospice administration or coordination, also uh, in social work. So that would be, you know, the type of uh, sp subspecialties that you're going to find today. Um, also attorneys. Um, you're going to be uh, looking at a price roughly below $2,000. It could vary. Um, you can do your research and I can guide you as we go. Uh, a lot of people um, offer uh, scholarships as well. So if money is an issue, we can talk about it. Um, that's always uh, uh, a sore point, um, but I would not emphasize that aspect of it at this point, because if you choose to be an end-of-life doula, um, you're going, it's going to come from the heart. You are going to be um, thinking about who is going to prepare you uh, the best um, to become um, certified and to serve your community um, as best as possible. Uh, as I believe last week, I talked to you about the end of life, uh, the National End of Life Doula Alliance, and. Uh, I will be uh, circulating the core competencies uh, that are being um, developed and the best trainers are following uh, those core competencies. It's, um, it's, uh, it's important and I would go and, and, and describe this a uh, little bit uh, uh, later. What you want to find in a trainer and what the typical trainers are doing nowadays is that they um, they take you through um, a series of models uh, online um, or in, uh, there are people who do also um, live presentations but the idea is to have models that are available for studying online um, complemented by uh, live uh, webinars with replays for when you can could be weekly, could be monthly. Uh, it's um, very engaging. It's really encouraging you to um, join uh, a community of people who have taken the same uh, training. And it's very important to feel that behind our computers, um, we, are, uh, we belong to a bigger family um, of people with the same uh, values. Um, Okay, so the core competencies that ne need to be covered by the trainers are um, as advertised, as advertised, as um, explained, sorry, by um, NIDA, the National End of Life Doula Alliance as our um, uh, uh, national organization, uh, are one, two, three, four. The first one is communication and interpersonal skills. Uh, this is something that is emphasized. Um, End-of-life doulas uh, cultivate effective communication skills and techniques to share with the patient, the family, the providers. Um, they also learn, uh, we learn to uh, advocate for our clients in ways that are supportive and respectful of all parties involved. Communication and interpersonal skills. Um, doulas collaborate effectively and build key relationships with personnel from healthcare facilities, nursing homes, hospices, hospitals, and learn how to navigate these systems. Um, 
we use uh, critical thinking and creative problem solving skills when working with clients and families. Um, very, very, um, very important. Um, and um, all the trainers are going to emphasize those skills. Second one, professionalism. Uh, end of life doulas uh, comport themselves professionally in the workplace. Uh, they know how to care for themselves while caring for others and actively seek opportunities to improve um, skills and understanding in the field. Uh, we tend to um, uh, practical business matters such as um, liability insurance, um, reporting, documentation, and effectively and accurately representing themselves. And of life doula would choose to uh, pursue a hospice partnership or conservant with hospice Medicare conditions of participation for volunteers. This is something we can go on uh, further. So first, communication and interpersonal skills that are being um, taught. Uh, second, professionalism. Third one are prof um, technical skills. Uh, end of life doulas uh, support caregivers by providing care and comfort, respite assistance, household services, vigil presence, ceremonial, ceremonial support, bereavement follow-up, and uh, any other means of tending to the caregiver when assisting them in caring for the dying. Um, end of life doula support um, the dying by providing non-medical care. Um, conscious dying guidance, comfort modalities, spiritual support, and any other means uh, of tending to the well-being of individuals. Um, we have knowledge about the needs of the dying, uh, the patient's right, uh, and the basic clinical care that is being provided by medical personnel. The trainers will um, educate you on that matters, on that matter, those matters. Uh, end of life doulas assist clients and others involved in developing an initial core plan that includes use of online management tools, paper forms, calendars, and other ways of organizing uh, patient and family care, funeral plans, logistics and access time frames, and other essential planning needs. Um, end of life doulas possess uh, essential technical knowledge in the areas of legal issues, medical protocols, basic safety precautions, medical assisted dying, and voluntary stopping of eating and drinking. They are knowledgeable uh, about the needs of special populations and and that's very interesting too, very important, to cultural and spiritual needs and expectations. So I said communication in per interpersonal skills, professionalism, we covered most of the technical skills, and now values and ethics. Um, end of life doulas know and respect their roles and responsibilities as defined by the national uh, end of life doula uh, alliance mission statements, scope of practice, and code of ethics. And we represent, um, we present uh, ourselves in a manner consistent with known and accepted ethical conduct and values when in the field and work within the doula model of care. So uh, I've read to you this, uh, this sheet, and it's very important, and I will provide it to you. Because all the trainers um, that I know of that are reputable will cover uh, these uh, core competencies, and it's very important in choosing a trainer that um, you 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 get this basic um, basic curriculum, uh, so you can um, be part of the bigger uh, movement. Uh, when I became a doula, so I trained about three months and did uh, all the, 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 the trainings uh, online, the um, exercises, the case studies uh, that were provided. And then I started um, really um, reading 
building myself, um, getting knowledgeable on all the uh, aspects uh, to uh, be able to serve. And of course, um, we are required in order to be certified to um, have uh, a certain number of uh, direct care um, experience. And the best way to do that is to become an end of life um, and to become a, a, a hospice direct care volunteer. And so uh, this is what I did. And uh, I started and I did uh, about, I think I had to do minimum of 30 hours uh, at that time. And I think it's uh, at least that much. Um, what I decided to do is that after um, I got all my hours, I remained uh, a hospice volunteer. And it's been over three years now. And I've been able to see over 100 um, patients um, not two people are the same. And the more um, uh, expertise uh, we build, uh, the more um, uh, relationships uh, we build with individuals, the more uh, knowledgeable we become and the more um, um, valuable we are to our community. Um, this is my personal point, so don't take it for... Um, um, you know, an obligation, but uh, I'm very, very happy with uh, that approach that is actually recommended by most of the trainers that I know. Um, it is in addition to increasing the expertise, you know, you get to know your community, you get to know the people who serve uh, in hospice uh, and in palliative care, and you get to uh, understand even better um <coughs> Uh, where there might be a little gap uh, and where you can serve independently, um, but yet um, as adjunct to what's already there. So uh, I think that's going to be it for today. Um, I'd like to have some of your feedback and ask me what is it that you'd like to know about the trainings. Um, just, you know, let me know so I can answer your questions. I thank you for your time, and uh, I see you next week.